Okay, thanks, thanks for coming. Uh, that's the almost last talk on a Sunday, so thanks for uh, sticking around and, uh, and coming to, uh, to listen to this. Um, you have a cloud now what? So, you know, I used to, to start working on clouds, and really what I was looking at is how to get a, a clone of Amazon EC2. So I'm working on Apache CloudStack. I'm a committer on CloudStack and a member of the, the PMC. So we, you know, we worry about low-level details of actually how you create CloudStack, how you manage storage, network, and so on. But really what I'm interested in personally is to uh, get a clone of EC2, okay? Because you know, we've learned everything from Amazon. And what we learned from Amazon, we have no clue how they are uh, building their clouds, okay? Uh, they're probably using Zen, uh, but you know, we don't know much in terms of storage, in terms of network. We don't know how they're uh, creating all their services. So it's kind of black magic. But what we know is that they have a bunch of services. So they have storage services. Of course, they have EC2 for compute. They have archive services. And now they're coming up with a bunch of analytics services. Of course, Elastic Map Reduce that came, came out in 2009. Uh, Kinesis now for uh, stream processing, uh, Redshift for a data warehouse. So when you look at this in terms of cloud, I mean, it's nice that we're all talking about hypervisor choice and performance and SDN and, and storage solution and Ceph works on this but doesn't work with this version of Libvirt and things like this. But, you know, when we look at Amazon, really, they are just spinning up new services left and right every, every month, every quarter. We have new services. And to me, that's what you know, it's about. Okay? It's about building those services and then using them, whether it's for application deployment or uh, application, uh, yeah, application development in terms of virtual infrastructure or actually having an application and putting it on there. So the, the landscape, you know, we've seen it today and, and yesterday, the landscape in terms of open source uh, infrastructure as a service solution, it's really uh, CloudStack, OpenStack, Open Nebula, Yuka, Overt, Ganetti. We've heard a talk by uh, the guys from Cinefo. Uh, I don't think there was any talk by Eucalyptus, but Eucalyptus was really the first software that came out that was trying to, uh, to emulate uh, Amazon and create a clone of, uh, of Amazon. So that, that's fine, but really you know, what we want to do is actually, once we've built those, we actually want to use that, the API that they're exposing and we want to serve services and use those services, okay? So that's really what interests, interests me. Uh, so I'm not gonna talk about these really, you know, in details, but what I have is that I have some friends in, uh, in Switzerland, they have this cloud exoscale and I play a lot with it because it's in production. It uses CloudStack uh, behind it and it is a, it's a fairly basic cloud in the sense that it just you just instantiate and create virtual machines and it gives you virtual machines uh, kind of like Amazon, which means that it's a, a public IP and then you manage security group and, and key pairs. So a lot of things, I'm actually going to show you some, uh, some demos and, uh, and we're gonna use that cloud because it's in production. And my point being that even, even though we are building uh, or we are trying to figure out how to build those clouds for within companies, private clouds and so on, there are some of those that are not EC2 that are already in production out there. Uh, so CloudStack, originally it was just CloudStack and then I just modified it called Stacks uh, because it wouldn't be fair to uh, you know, just, do, uh, just do the cloud stack. But you'll see what I mean by this, is that if we look at all the components of those uh, YAS, uh, of course they have you know, something to handle compute, so virtualization, farm of hypervisors, uh, they have uh, something to handle storage, whether it's image catalog, or a data volume and then networking. We've heard about SDN and, and, and things like this. So those are the, the three main uh, you know, components there. Then you have image management. So you know, in, in CloudStack, we actually don't give it a name. It's just uh, image management. Uh, in uh, OpenStack, that would be uh, Glance. Uh, identity management, same in CloudStack. We don't give it a name. But in OpenStack, that would be Keystone. Uh, so compute would be Nova controller, but for us, CloudStack, we don't have a name. Uh, but you see that you know, in all those projects, whether you take Open Nebula, OpenStack, CloudStack, you're gonna find those same, same things. And those three, they expose an API uh, on top over there. Uh, they have a nat native API, I'm gonna talk more about it. 
or they also have a, an EC2, an Amazon uh, bridge. And that's really what we're going to use to build those uh, additional services, uh, dashboard and so on. So in terms of dashboard, you know, for example, it's just an example to show you that all those components, basically, uh, all those systems have the same type of uh, components underneath. That's the dashboard for CloudStack uh, in Chinese because I worked a lot on the localization. Uh, if you look at OpenStack, you know, there is another dashboard called Horizon. And of course, if you look at Open Nebula, they also have a dashboard that's called Sunstone, Sunstone I think, yeah, uh, that comes with it. So you're going to find the, the, the same things in all those uh, ES solutions. In terms of API, that's really, the, that's really the key. And to me, that's, that's what the cloud is about. You know, it's much more than virtualization. It's really exposing all the capaci capabilities of those uh, <coughs> systems through an easy-to-use API. So CloudStack has a very extensive API. Every functionality is exposed to that API. It's not a pure REST API. I mean, it's HTTP JSON, but there's more than this to REST than just HTTP JSON. Uh, so it's more of a query API. Uh, OpenStack is, uh, as far as I know, really fully REST API in the sense that you, know, you have very well-defined URI, uh, and then you can use different types of methods, get, post, uh, put, delete, to actually manage those resources. In CloudStack, everything is going to be a get or a post. Okay? So they have, they have APIs. So that's fine. So you've built that cloud. They expose an API. You're happy. You can start playing with this. Okay? So now, how do you do this? Well, so you go to GitHub, and, uh, and you look for clients. So you need a client to talk to that API, to that cloud. Uh, left side is OpenStack. You do OpenStack clients, you get 72 repositories in GitHub. And then CloudStack, you, you do CloudStack client, you get 22. And then whether you're a Python guy, a Ruby guy, Java, JavaScript, you pick the one you want. OK? Okay. Only at FOSDEM do you see guys coming in and then passing in front of the. <laughs> so you know, Python, lots of Python in, uh, in OpenStack. Of course, it's all written in, uh, in Python. But we also have Python clients in, uh, in CloudStack. So really, what's interesting there is that whatever language you're using, whatever app, app you're trying to do, you're going to find a client for that cloud on, uh, on GitHub. The state of that client, you know, we can debate, but there is something happening there. Uh, so let's look at a few clients. Uh, the next one is specific to CloudStack, but then I'm going to talk about a few ones within the Apache Software Foundations that are actually uh, common to, uh, to all of the, the YAS solution, but also other cloud providers that, that don't provide software, but that provide uh, cloud services. Uh, CloudMonkey is specific uh, to CloudStack. That's really our CLI. So EC2 has an EC2 CLI, of course, that you, know, you install on your machine, and that's how you manage uh, EC2. Uh, so CloudMonkey, that's for us. That's for CloudStack. You run CloudMonkey, and then you have access to all the APIs of CloudStack. And that's how you, uh, you do very low-level operations in, in your cloud. And I'll, I'll show you some demos. It's as easy as pip install CloudMonkey if you want to get it. Uh, now, you know, of course, I work on the, in the Apache Software Foundation, so I like all the projects that I'm seeing at DSF. There are tons of them, you know, 150 projects at DSF. Uh, LibCloud is very interesting, and I work on LibCloud because it's in Python, and I do Python. So even though I work on CloudStack, which is Java, you know, I code more in, uh, in LibCloud. Uh, what you see with LibCloud is that it's actually a wrapper. It's a Python wrapper on top of all the APIs. Not only uh, CloudStack, OpenStack, but also you see SoftLayer, uh, GoGrid, DreamHost, Amazon, Google Compute Engine, and so on. So that means that if you're using multiple clouds, uh, you take LibCloud, and then you can write an application. And basically, the differences in APIs are going to be totally abstracted and you're going to be able to use that, uh, that module. So now you're, you're starting to see that, OK, those clouds are exposing APIs. Now we have wrappers. Uh, and of course, some of you are thinking standards, but we'll talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> so typical libcloud script uh, looks like this. This is Python. You import the modules, and then you get a driver for that cloud. So here you see exoscale. I just instantiate the exoscale driver. I specify my keys. 
And then I have access to a list of commands that uh, are common, that are the, the base API of LibCloud. So list images, list sizes. Those are very basic functionality of every cloud. You know, list the, list the zones, list the templates, list the uh, instance types, start a node, things like this. And at the bottom, you see here, there's a deploy node method where you can actually start an instance and then pass scripts and execute those scripts uh, on, the, on the deployment. So typical LibCloud uh, setup. And this is, even though I did Exoscale, <coughs> which is my, uh, my cloud stack cloud, if you remove that, that driver line, okay, all the rest is going to be valid for any cloud. OpenStack, OpenNebula, EC2. There is nothing specific about cloud stack. Well, almost. <laughs> Uh, JCloud is another one that, who uses JCloud? Yeah, okay, one person, okay. <laughs> Great. No, it's heavily used. JCloud is heavily used. It's another project at the SF. It's a top level project, right? Yeah, they, they graduated. So it's a top level project. Uh, it was donated recently to the SF. It's all Java. And basically, it's just like LibCloud, but it's in Java. So it gives you a Java library that can talk to any of those clouds and abstract the differences in, in APIs, okay? And it's used in lots of tools that, that you may use and without knowing really that there's JCloud. For example, if you guys have heard of Cloudify from Gigaspaces, it's using uh, JCloud. Delta Cloud is another one that's Ruby. It's in Ruby and it's also at DSF. So here you see that you know, the, the cloud doesn't matter because you have wrappers, and then the language doesn't even matter because you're gonna find the client. And here, just at DSF, you have three projects that do the same thing and that are in the language of your choice. So Delta Cloud is in Ruby. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. It was kind of sponsored by Red Hat or started by Red Hat, and then they dropped it a little bit, it seems. Uh, but it's the same thing. It gives you a wrapper on top of uh, all the, the differences. So now that's great, but you have all those interfaces and nothing is standard. So there is no standardization on the API. And then, you know, there is no, uh, all those in wrappers are, are different. So we are seeing some standardization effort here. Uh, from DMTF, we have the CME standard that's coming up, which is an attempt at standardizing all those APIs for the cloud. And OCCI is another one uh, from Open Grid Forum, OGF. But right away, you see the problem, okay? We're talking standard, and I'm already giving you two. <laughs> so that's kind of problematic. I mean, to me, really, the standard is Amazon. That's the de facto standard. And, uh, you know, it's not, uh, they're not pushing it. They're not pushing for it to be standardized. But since, you know, it's so heavily used, that's really the, the de facto standard. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with the Google uh, Compute Engine that just was, uh, was made uh, GA, uh, which is yet again a different API, and we'll see if that uh, that gains some steam and uh, and uh, and becomes more of a standard. Now, Open Nebula, for example, is pushing really hard to have uh, EC2 compatibility. Of course, Eucalyptus was uh, from the start an EC2 clone, so everything they do is EC2 compliant with Amazon. And actually, if you go to GitHub and you look for a, a Eucalyptus client, you'll find one. Okay, which is Yuka. Uh, <clears throat> but in, uh, in CloudStack, what we're doing, I mean, we recognize that EC2 is very important, so we have an EC2 bridge, and we're developing a new one uh, to get better. And then we also have a Google and Compute Engine bridge, which means that you can use the Google Compute Engine clients to talk to CloudStack. Okay, so we got that cloud, whatever solution you're using, exposes an API, and then you choose your wrapper, okay? Okay, that's fine. But now we need to do things on top of this. Uh, so of course, one of the, my managers said, you're going up stack. I don't really like it, but anyway, that's what's happening. So on top of the clients, you know, you're building up those services, okay? Then that's really what we are trying to, so we are going towards a platform as a service. And I, I took a clue again from uh, Amazon Web Service uh, because I knew about their cloud formation service. And then I also knew about OpsWorks, but I didn't really understand the difference. So if you go to their page, they have an application management page. They have a nice FAQ. 
And there is this picture where basically it starts from the low-level services, EC2, start an instance, uh, create a firewall, create a key pair, things like this, you know, stop the instance. Very basic image management. Uh, lots of control. And then you go towards building templates, so orchestrating, orchestrating multiple instances now. So you're defining the software running in those machines. You're defining the number of machines running, how they interact. And then you go even further until you reach Beanstalk, which is really now for your app developer who is going to do, take that app and just stick it through an API. And Amazon is going to do the, to do the magic. So somehow we have to find a way to go from YAS, API, clients, and then move all the way so that we can, uh, we can offer uh, those very nice PaaS services. So we have tools that go in that direction, uh, something like Apache Were. <coughs> it's a little bit dated right now, but it's, uh, so it's, in, it's in Apache, of course. It's based on JClouds. And what happens there is that you write a definition of uh, the, the VMs that you want started, the software you want on them. It can use basic bash script for a configuration, or it can use a configuration management tool. And then you start that, uh, that cluster of instances, and it's going to be provisioned. That means that let's say you want to build a MongoDB cluster or an Elasticsearch cluster. You define this in, a, in your file, in your JCloud template, fit it to, to, uh, to Weir, and it's going to, uh, it's going to start. So that's great. Uh, but what we're seeing also now is from uh, the guys in uh, configuration management, uh, I think we're seeing very, very interesting things. And the configuration management room was full uh, yesterday. Uh, so that's just an example with Chef. But again, you, could do, you can do similar things with Puppet and SaltStack and Ansible, probably. Uh, so I'm here over there. I'm developing on my laptop. I have a Chef client. And I define my recipes for the software that I want installed in those uh, virtual machines. And now what's going to happen is that from my laptop, I can actually use the, the knife tool from, uh, from Opscode to actually de directly deploy my node in the cloud. And it's going to install the, the software that I, uh, that I define. So I show you, I'll show you uh, an example of this. But I think that's, that's very, very powerful because now you're bridging, you're bridging the gap between configuration management and actually using the cloud. So you're on your laptop, you have all those recipes, you push, and suddenly you have you know, 10 instances with whatever you want, you know, Elasticsearch, Hadoop, whatever. Uh, and the cloud almost becomes uh, transparent. The next one, <clears throat> this is great, but lately I've been, uh, I've been playing with Vagrant. Uh, vagrantup.com and Vagrant is a tool to uh, basically create virtual machines and initially to create virtual machines on your laptop so that you can uh, use configuration management whatever you, you decide you know, uh, salt stack again, chef, puppet simple bash scripts and you can, you can define the software you want in those machines <coughs> in a Vagrant file and then it's going to create that instance. Now what's interesting is that Vagrant is coming up with uh, plugins for all those clouds. So now you're developing, and at the same time, directly from Vagrant, you can push those instances in the cloud and build those infrastructure. Uh, you guys want to take a break and see a demo? I feel like I'm losing you, so let's do a demo. OK. What do you want to see? OK, let's. I'm cheating because I, I know what you so let's do Cloud Monkey, for example. Uh, so first, let me show you Exoscale. Okay. So I have my cloud. That's Exoscale. It's very big. Uh, if I get network, it's Cloud Stack behind it. It doesn't look like Cloud Stack because they redid the entire UI, <coughs> but it has very basic functionality and it works great. So you can start instances, define uh, security groups, create key pairs, things like this. There's not going to be any demo if I cannot get on the network. <laughs> uh, 
There you go. So here I have one instance running. As I said, you can define security groups. Within security groups, you can define ingress, egress rules, OK? So CloudMonkey here is connected to, uh, it's configured to use, uh, to use this exascale cloud. So now I can type, <coughs> for example, uh, I type list, tab, tab, and it listed all the list type APIs in CloudStack. So all those are APIs that are available that I can use through CloudMonkey. So list volumes, list VPC. Uh, what can we do? Yeah, of course, list virtual machines. <laughs> okay. It looks a little bit like garbage, but you can filter, you can filter that. Uh, ID name. So you get nice output. So you have a very nice CLI to your cloud, and now you can, you can start messing with things. With, uh, with libcloud, OK, so the, if you know Python here, I'm just entering a, an IPython interactive shell. <coughs> and basically, I, have a, I initialized it with some connection objects. So I have a, a connection, which is an exoscale driver. And it has a bunch of methods, create key pair, create node, you name it. So if you do, for example, con uh, list nodes, uh, you see the same. The same node you got, con list uh, images. OK, you see all the images available and so on. So now you can script and do uh, interesting, uh, in interesting things. Uh, let's launch. Let's try to launch a Hadoop cluster. Uh, so I mentioned this tool from SF Were, Apache Were. So it uses JCloud to talk to the cloud. Uh, and we're going to give it a, a configuration file. <clears throat> so it's just launch cluster. And you give a configuration file that just has list of security groups you want, the key pair you want, uh, the software you want installed, the version. So here I'm saying I want the Cloudera Hadoop distribution. Things like this. <coughs> OK, so it looks like it's starting well. So it's going to start 10 nodes. Uh, I'm going to have one name node, Hadoop name node, and then job trackers. So basically, it's using that client, starting the, the instances, and then it's going to SSH into it, run the uh, bash scripts. That one is a very basic version of running bash scripts to install Hadoop, and, at the, and then at the end, it should return and give me a, a SSH uh, sequence to get on there. So if I, look at, uh, if I look back at my dashboard here, looks like it's starting. Uh, so I got all my Hadoop nodes that are starting, Ubuntu 12.04. Once they are running all green, then SSH is going to connect and, and start configuring things. The one that I like a lot <coughs> is Chef. So CS server list. When I started working with virtualization, uh, you know, all the all the users said, "Oh, I want a VM. I want a VM. Why? Because I want to be root." Like, OK, so here is a virtual machine, you root. And then after a couple months, they were like, oh, no, I don't want to be root. I don't want to manage the, <laughs> the software. <laughs> Give it back. So now you know, people are back to kind of using configuration management and not wanting to be root. So that's interesting. So anyway, so Knife, you know, you can do the same thing with Knife. Uh, is it template list? So all those tools give you the same capability, whether it's libcloud, jcloud, Knife, you know, you can, you can list things, list all the templates uh, available. Uh, here, what we're going to do, just for the heck of it, uh, is this 
So that's not black magic. Can you, can you read that? So knife server create. So I want to create an instance, a uh, small instance type. I want to use Ubuntu as a template. Uh, when, when that starts, I'm going to SSH as root using this key. When you start the instance, you stick this key pair, which is pre-configured. You use this security group, Elasticsearch. Uh, no public IP. That's, that's just saying, that's just telling Knife to uh, not allocate an IP address and try to configure NAT and things like this. And then here, that's the configuration magic where I, I, I tell Chef to, uh, to try to install the Elasticsearch head uh, role. And then I give you the a name for them. Let's try to start that. <clears throat> so that role, what's, what's in that role is basically a list of recipes that I want Chef to, uh, to go through to configure the, the software. And I pre-created this. That's actually the Elasticsearch recipes coming directly from their GitHub repo. So hopefully, if things go well, that starts the instance, that's going to SSH to that instance, uh, install the Chef client, then go through the recipe, and then if everything goes well, I will have a working Elasticsearch uh, with an engine, Nginx proxy running in five minutes. Shall we bet? OK, so during that time, uh, my Hadoop cluster is bootstrapping. All the instances are running. I see my FOSDEM machine has started in a different security group, Elasticsearch. How is, uh, how is JCloud running here? Yeah. So JCloud is bootstrapping, setting up lots of uh, uh, rules for the, uh, on the firewalls. So we'll let that, we'll let that go, and, uh, and then I'll get back to it. No. So I was talking about you know, Vagrant. And <laughs> Vagrant is for developers, but I can see production guys actually starting to use Vagrant because you have configuration management in there that you can share. And then you have plugins to deploy in the, in the cloud. So that's a Vagrant file. And you see, again, you specify your, uh, your box. You specify the host, the keys. And then what's going to happen is that it's going to push that machine. So those are kind of still low-level, you know, low-level tools that you can uh, that you can use. But definitely, what we have is the, all the paths out, out there. Uh, Cloud Foundry definitely uh, the big leader uh, in uh, in paths. Uh, Scaler, Slipstream, which are less known, uh, and then Cloudify, which is uh, gaining quite a bit of, of traction. And all those work with CloudStack or OpenStack. Uh, I don't know if they work with op yeah Open Nebula. Probably. So those are some paths. Now, you know, going back to EC2, and we have that EC2 service. We're trying to go, you know, to the left. Uh, how about cloud formation? Can you do cloud formation with any of those uh, infrastructure as a service solution? So in CloudStack, we now have Stactician. Uh, it's on GitHub. It's a Rails application. Uh, so you can actually use the backend if you if you're low level and you want to just push. Uh, cloud formation templates. You can use the backend part of this, which is called Stackmate. But otherwise, you have Stacticians, which give you a, a web front end where you can enter your cloud formation templates and then they, they start. Uh, of course, OpenStack has Heat, which has I and I couldn't find a good picture of Heat, so that's the one I found on uh, on Google. Uh, as I understand it, uh, OpenStack Heat can also consume uh, cloud formation templates. And it also does uh, auto scaling. Okay, so we are starting to see those higher level services in in, in any of those uh, solutions. Uh, so let's go back and see if we made any headway. Yay! So this is where. So if everything goes well, I'm going to SSH to this guy, which is the Hadoop name node. Okay. And now I should have Hadoop running.
hopefully. Yay! OK. Uh, I'm not going to run a MapReduce job, uh, but I want you to trust me that it works. OK? Uh, so you can go and actually put data uh, with the FS commands and then actually run MapReduce and so on. Right now, I don't know, I messed up something with the security group. <coughs> so it's actually not going to work. But um, it, does, it does work, OK? So I need you to trust me on that. So that's fine. So in like, what was that, 10 minutes, I provisioned a Hadoop cluster in a cloud. I think that's, that's pretty cool. Why am I trying to do this? Because I want to expose map, a MapReduce API, OK? I would like us to be able to provide an elastic MapReduce service uh, on top of uh, any cloud stack uh, cloud. So that's the, that's the basis that you need to start with. You need to be able to start a Hadoop cluster on demand and then you know, expose Yarn or uh, whatever API there. Uh, what's the other one? So Chef is still going. Uh, is Chef still going? Yes, Chef is still going. So to wait for Chef, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to start another node in, in, uh, in LibCloud. You guys want to do this? Harm is like, this is boring. <laughs> so that would be con, connection, you know, deploy node, uh, deploy node. You give a name to your instance, FOSDEM1. You specify an image. You specify a size, OK? And then you specify a key name. That's the key pair, uh, exoscale. And then you specify a SSH key. Where is the private key for that key pair that you're going to use? And then you specify a deploy script, deploy call MSD. <coughs> so that's the type of command. I mean, that's that's much lower level than much lower level than were or uh, or the the, the knife uh, commands. Oh, okay, so knife has finished. So if we go through everything, I mean, you know, it bootstrapped, installed Chef, and then went through the recipes, and then started Nginx. Because if I expose that Elasticsearch cluster, uh, that's, that's not good. So where is that, where is that node? So it's uh, FOSDEM. So FOSDEM IP, that's the IP. And you can do curl for Elasticsearch or Chrome as a nice uh, extension, which is uh, uh, it's called sense. So you just specify the IP of that node, 8080, because that's my Nginx port. Uh, I set up, uh, I set up basic authentication, but I entered the login and password before. So if it rem it's not running. Well, almost perfect demo. Let's go back to this guy. OK, well, Elasticsearch and Nginx are running, so it doesn't like something. OK, that was working. How about our node here? Ah, OK, cool. So the deploy has finished here. Now, what's interesting with, uh, with LibCloud is that the, uh, when you deploy with this, that's just basically a list of scripts. 
and now I should have uh, the standard out, okay? Uh, when I define this, it's a list of script. One of, one of the script is called script. And then when it finishes, you can get standard out from it. And what I was running was bin date, okay? That's the uh, hello world of grid computing. So that works. We deploy the node and, uh, and run, run some scripts on it, okay? So now let's finish with my Hadoop where destroy cluster config small. Let's just destroy everything. It's on demand, so bing. And what we should see over here is we should see all the instances stop. Mm. That's not the part I was expecting to have problems. <laughs> the network is a little bit. Uh... OK, so the network, you know, probably an, a, a problem with the network. OK, but that's, that's basically it. Uh, I think you got the idea that, you know, we're trying to build those higher services. There is a choice of uh, clients and then tools on top of that. And whether you're Python, Ruby, Java guy, you can find your, uh, your client for whatever solution, CloudStack, OpenStack, uh, Open Nebula. And then we're trying to expose you know, higher level services uh, that clone Amazon. And we already have CloudFormation. Uh, so I think we're going to expect more like Elastic MapReduce, Beanstalk, and, uh, and you name it. If you want to get involved with Apache CloudStack, look it up. And that's it. Thank you.